I'm John Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to learn about track stacks within Logic Pro. Now, this is a really useful technique when you want to group sounds together in sound categories. But before we get into that, let's have a listen to the track that we're going to be working on. This is a, an evolution of the track that um, was uh, being used in the MIDI delay video, um, but uh, now it's got, in addition to strings, some winds, some brass, some percussion, and some tune percussion too. Let's have a listen to it. Okay, so very much an homage to John Williams. So what I've got here is a group of um, string sounds, which are in green at the top. We've then got a celeste part here, tuned percussion instruments. These light brown instruments are all winds. The uh, uh, orange instruments down here are brass, and then there is some timpani here in this uh, blue track down here at the bottom. And what I want to do is to use track stacks to allow me to organize this project. So what do I mean by that? Okay, well, let's have a look at the way that all of these sounds are currently being rooted within Logic. If I open up the mixer, what I can see is that I'm using Spitfire Audio's BBC Symphony um, Orchestra um, sounds. All of these sounds are from that library. And what I can see is that all of the individual tracks are being sent to the stereo output. And I can see the stereo output channel over here on the right hand side. So at the moment, every single sound is being routed through directly to the output. So all of the ambience you're hearing in these samples, any sort of reverb is inherently part of the instrument itself, not something that I've added using Logic's effects. But what I want to do is to start thinking about how I might mix this piece of music. Now you can see that on some of the string tracks, I've kind of experimented with individual uh, EQ um, assignments. But what I actually want to do is to start thinking about sounds in groups of instruments so that they can be mixed in that way rather than one track at a time. So what I want to do is to assign all of the strings together and all of the winds together and all of the brass together so that I can think about EQ, potentially compression, potentially reverb, in groups of instruments rather than one track at a time. In other words, I want to get my mix kind of folded down to the stems that exist within that mix, and track stacks can help me do that. So what I'm going to do is to come back to the main page, and I'm going to select the string instruments, which are here, and I'm going to click on the first one, hold down shift, and click on the double basses, which is the last string instrument here. Now, what I have a chance to do when I control click is to create a track stack. I can see that there's a key command for that as well, but I'm going to just do this through the menu, and I'm going to select that option here. Now, what happens is that I've got two options. I can either create a summing stack or a folder stack. Now, what a folder stack allows me to do is to assign a fader, a volume fader, to control the instruments that I am putting into this stack. In other words, I'm going to get a volume fader, which is going to control the volume of both the violins, the violas, the cellos, and the double basses. So one folder, which will control all five instruments. But if I select the summing stack option, I get more options. And that's the option I'm going to pick here, because I want to explore those additional options that summing stacks uh, contain. So when I cre uh, press Create, we get immediately to see what I mean by these advanced options. Straight away, what's happened is that I've got a new auxiliary assignment. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that these five tracks are no longer being sent to the stereo output. Instead, what Logic has done is to route them through to a new auxiliary bus, bus number one, the first available bus. And bus number one, you can see its input is here. What that's doing is now sending to the stereo output. In other words, the strings are all being sent to this point, and from there, they're being sent to the stereo output. Now, the advantage of that is clear. I'm going to rename this strings. What it means is that, yes, absolutely, I've got a fader, exactly the same as I would have if I'd chosen the folder stack option. But with a summing stack, what I have a chance to do now is to start thinking about EQ, compression, or other effects to affect all of the sounds within this stack. I'm going to solo it for a moment and I'll show you what I mean. If what I decided to do was to add some reverb to this group of string sounds, rather than having to add that as an auxiliary or as an insert effect on every single one of these sounds, what instead I could do would be to interrupt the signal at this point and potentially use, well, let's suppose we're going to use chroma verb. I could 
um, insert chroma verb onto a track insert here. And what I could then do would be to go and find a sort of an appropriate space. I'm going to create a concert hall um, uh, approach. I'm going to set the decay time where I want it. I've gotten a chance to set a dry balance, the original signal, and decide how much reverb I want to add as well. And effectively now, what's going to happen is that this reverb is going to be added to all of the string parts because they're all being rooted to this place where the chroma verb is. And there's all that lovely reverb at the end. Similarly, if I decided that I wanted to EQ these sounds, I might decide I want an EQ up here at the top above the reverb. And what I have a chance to do now is to, of course, EQ this. And we can hear this very dramatically if I decide to punch in, for example, the filter at the bottom end. As I adjust this, we'll hear obviously all of the tone of the strings being affected because this, again, this EQ is on all of those sounds. And again, of course, if I want to add compression, I can do that too. So what I've got now is a track stack, a summing stack for the strings within this project. Now, if I come out of solo mode, we're going to start seeing the advantages of doing the same thing with the other instrument groups as well. Now, what I might choose to do would be to create a summing stack for the Celeste, even though it's the only instrument of its type within this project. I'll show you what I mean. Again, I'm going to um, simply control click here and create a track stack. Now, what that means, again, I'm going to select a summing stack is that it doesn't matter that there's only one sound here. What I can do is to call this tuned percussion. And what I'll see again within Logic is that what that is going to have done is to take the Celeste part, it's rooted it into bus number two. The input for bus two is here, so I know that this is the track stack for the tuned percussion, and this sound is being rooted into here. Now, you might be thinking, well, if there's only one track that's in the tuned percussion, why would I add a track stack? Well, it could be that I haven't finished this piece, and there are other tuned percussion instruments I want to add. I might decide to put a glockenspiel in, for instance. And now what I can do is to make sure that when I've done that, I put it in with the Celeste so it's part of the same sound world, and it Again, any EQ that I add, any reverb that I add will affect both of those instruments together. Again, creating the illusion with this virtual orchestra that these sounds are being treated in their groups. They're occupying the same bits of the stage as they would if a real orchestra was in front of me. And I can keep going, simply adding track stacks for each individual groups of sounds, including sounds maybe that I'm not even using. I might uh, add a piccolo part at some stage here, so I'm going to include it within my woodwind assignment. Again, new track stack here, and every time I do this, this one will be sum three to start with because it's the third one that I've added. This is my woodwinds, and straight away what I've got now is a stack here for the winds. I can do the same thing for the brass, and uh, suddenly all of the instrument groups are being controlled and organized in a, a really straightforward way. And I've got one last sound to do here, which is our untuned percussion, which I'll just call percussion. So the other advantage is that, of course, if I close these stacks down, I get to see a much more condensed sort of mix stage for my project. All of those individual instruments now can be controlled from the faders that exist for those tracks. If I wanted to simply set a volume balance between the strings and the brass and the winds, I have a chance now just to fold these down simply by closing these little arrows. And now I can see that my mix is effectively being controlled by five separate faders. Because they're summing stacks, I have a chance to add effects for them. So for example, I might decide that I want to add reverbs for other instrument groups as well. And just because they are now folded down into their own stacks doesn't mean that I, can, I can't add more effects as well. If I decided that the way that I wanted to add reverb for the brass was to set up a whole new auxiliary routing of my own by simply clicking here, coming into the buses and selecting the next available bus, that means that every sound on the brass bus through this send is now being sent into auxiliary six as well. So I could even make this called brass reverb if I wanted to add effects from um, auxiliaries triggered by entire track stacks. 
just in case that feels like it's just made your brain explode. What that effectively means is I've got a chance to take this group of sounds and together send them across to another auxiliary assignment of my own, which means that all of them, in addition to playing through this main channel, will also send their sound sideways into this auxiliary. Now, this is where we're getting into extended signal flow. And in fact, I've made an episode all about signal flow within Logic. So if that part doesn't make sense to you, do go and watch that video. But what we've seen within this video is the power of track stacks, the capability to take groups of instruments and put them together through an automatic auxiliary bus assignment that Logic creates for us. On those buses, we can create effects or add effects like EQ, like reverb, so that entire groups of instruments pass through the same tone or dynamics or spatial treatments before they reach the output stage. And what we've also seen right at the end there is that I can take the brass stack, if I like, and send it through to a whole new auxiliary assignment where I can add further effects if I want to. So track stacks allow us to make complicated, but nevertheless incredibly musically useful signal flow routings for the tracks within our projects.